friends and man we're back with some more spirit hunter death mark 2 let's do this let's talk to dang you got balls if you're going into the fox forest at night lots and lots of respect for you let me know if you need anything all right all right and then i need to I need to do the claps, right? Okay, it was two beats for monkey, two monkey, three tiger, one snake, two monkey, three tiger, one snake, two monkey, three, three tiger, one snake. Two monkey, three tiger, one snake. Oops. Yes. Two monkey, three tiger, one snake. A mouse. Two monkey, three tiger, one snake. Cow. Two monkey, three tiger, mm -hmm. one snake. This one's a tiger. I feel like I need to do it in order too, so we're going to do that. Two monkey, three tiger, one mm -hmm. snake. Rabbit. Two monkey, three tiger, and one snake. Dragon. I think monkey's like near the end. There's a snake. So tiger's before snake. Okay. Hopefully this is monkey or monkey was the one with the path behind it to a horse. Okay. I think about monkey's the next one or the one after. Mm-hmm. Sheep. Two monkey, three tiger, one snake. Or it's the one after this. Oh, here we go. Two monkey, three tiger, one snake. Let's clap. Two monkey. Two monkey. I think that was. No, this was snake. All right, and then I think tiger was two before snake. No, it was the one before this. Tiger. Three tiger. Clap three times. All right, and then one snake, which is the one with the path. Two, three. Mm -hmm. One snake. Clap one. Two claps for the monkey, three claps for the tiger, and one clap for the snake. All right. That must have changed something. Let's see what it was. I bet the guy's not on the path anymore. I have a feeling. Or it removed the rock. <laughs> I got so scared I accidentally tapped out. <laughs> he was still there. I, I should have expected him to still be there, but I think he just popped up so quick while I was ready. All right. Was it the ro rooster path or was it the snake path? That had the extra path on it. I might have been the snake. Man, I should have known. Here we go. It didn't change this. A huge stone is blocking the path. Thick shrine rope is wrapped around the stone. I wonder what that means. Should I investigate it more closely? Touch it. Touch it. Probably still nothing. I grabbed the rope and tried shaking it hard. Oh, ow. Okay, never mind. So, still hurts. Severe chills besieged my entire body once again. I knew it. This isn't an ordinary stone. I better stop. Oh. Something rolls down from the gap between the rope and the stone. Is it because I shook it? Is it a tooth? I knew it. All right. Pick it up. Eerie tooth. All right. What did I change then? Let's go back to the infirmary because I think I have enough to teeth. To I almost said tooths. <laughs> I have enough teeth to, uh, yeah. I have five. All right, let's trade. Let's see. Trade for sacred objects. Muramasa wore three two souls. Bag enhancement. Black Madonna? Let's try that. Increases rate during sus by 20%. Can I check the one I have on? 
reduce three action costs during sus oh reduce three damage from oh and then okay wait so i can carry up to three items i'm just upgrading them basically should i do the one that removes three or removes the what was this reduce three action costs during sub i might do that because some of them some of them get really i don't know look I, there has to be a way for me to see what i have on me right now Oh, here we go. So I have my favorite bag. Mifune's Temple Straw Doll is minus two. The do oh, the gourd only removes one. And then the... Oh, so that is plus 15%. So all of these are basically upgrades for what I've already been... Uh, had on me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna do the... Ma oh, wait. No, no, we're not. I, the 5% increase is pretty good. But we'll do this one, because this one I haven't upgraded since, like, the beginning, it seems like. There we go. Alright, and then I have, uh... Two. Oh, there's four left in the chapter, okay. So what would if... Maybe if we go back to the guy... The mushroom thing. Or change something with not the serpent path, but the... But with the rooster path, maybe? Let's check rooster path first, and then we'll, uh... We'll, uh, check the mushroom guy. I had a... F I, I don't know. I felt like, uh, maybe if the mushroom guy... Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Darkness extends. I can't hear the voice anymore. Okay, good. Let's go then. Now that the voice is gone, let's just keep going. Oh, you know what? Or I could try talking to him. You wrote down the stuff that was on the signboard, right? Can you decipher it, Mr. Yoshiki? I did. Let's try this. Okay. The mushroom man lets out a shout of joy before vanishing. Oh, there we go. Okay. Two beats for the monkey, three beats for the tiger, and one beat for the snake. Maybe the board's message helped us exercise the impurity, aka that spirit. Maybe? Hey, you know, that monster was wearing a Konoehara Academy uniform. You think it's Kakuda? N nope. He had blonde hair and wasn't as big as Kakuda. Who the freak was that bastard then? Hmm, let me think. Maruhashi mentioned some delinquents who dis disappeared in the forest. Maybe he's one of them. Kokuri's deep-seated grudge is swirling all around this forest. One slip-up, and that figure might be the last thing we ever see. Hmm. There's an old stone lantern. There's an animal carved upon the lantern. Looks like a boar to me. The twelfth sign of the Chinese zodiac, the boar. Let's inspect it. The stone is quite weathered, so there's things these things are quite old. It's surface... Yeah. Hopefully, that means there's a tooth behind the stone. There seems to be the animal tracks leading further. Oh, diverging from the path. What's this way? That was the final zodiac, so I wonder. What's that? Yoshi. Umbrella shaped mushrooms are growing on the tree trunk. Seeing this many mushrooms would make. Would many. Anyone. I think they meant make. Seeing this many mushrooms would make anyone feel queasy, even if they don't have trypophobia. See? I heard something over there. I'm just gonna go down this path first, I think. <laughs> Before we go on. We follow the animal tracks surrounded by overgrown Florida once again. I wonder what's waiting for me in this deep, dark forest. That... There's an open area in front of us. Something's there. 
Oh my. What's all this then? Several logs have been arranged in this meadow. They kind of resemble a fence. An inordinate number of mushrooms are growing around the logs. This place looks like a mushroom farm to me. Better be careful, Yashiki. This place is practically screaming ambush to me. Okay. Man, I'm so glad it doesn't do like what it used to do in the the first... Well, at fir first and NG, where like if you hover your, your flashlight random places, you could see a ghost. Watch a ghost appear. A stump with mushrooms growing on it. What's that? Hopefully a tooth. Something's stuck on the other side of the stump. I take a few steps closer and find a metal grip protruding from the ground. I try to pull it out. It was actually a shovel. Oh, what's it, what's it doing here? Uh oh. Oh my. The, the voice just now. It sounded like a male's voice. Mashita is not showing any reaction. Looks like I'm the only one who heard it. Ugh. This shovel might have some sordid tail attached to it. Despite the creepiness, this shovel might come in handy. I decide to take it despite my pounding heart's protestations. Pro protestations? Protestations? How do you pronounce that? Yoshi. Logs are assembled like a fence. I can't see what's on the other side of the fence. Let's move in closer and get a better look. You sure? Oh no. Uh oh. We find a corpse wearing a Kono Ehara Academy uniform on the ground. Unsettling, wit it. Whitish. Unsettling, whitish mushrooms are growing from the body. Is this another victim of Kokuri's curse? What are we gonna do? Stay back. I'll expect to inspect the corpse. I cautiously approach the dead body. Where should I start? The body. My eyes are fixed on the corpse. Uh, I can feel gastric juices well up in my throat. The more I stare at it, the more repulsive it looks. This used to be a human being and now it looks like this? Don't look away. I utter a, a mild cast castigation to myself and continue observing the body. While the sprouting mushrooms have torn up the uniform, it isn't that dirty. He must have died recently. A green tie? That indicates he's a second year. Mushrooms are growing all over his large body. Pants pockets. I reach inside the corpse's pants pockets. Inside I find a cell phone. It's pretty much stock and has no distinctive customizations, making it hard for us to guess who owned it. Maybe I can learn something from the phone itself. I press the buttons to no avail. Guess it's been broken. Oof. Blazer pockets. I reach inside the corpse's blazer pockets. I find a piece of paper inside the pocket. It seems to have been torn from something. I position the beam of my flashlight so I can examine the paper's content. Fox Lakata, a type of fungus that only lives in the fox forest. It's sporocarp, doesn't have a stalk or cap, takes the shape of a reed, a poisonous mushroom. It contains 10 times the amount of psilocybin. I'm pretty sure that's how it's pronounced, right? Cause it's like cyanocobalamin or something. I'm pretty sure, I don't know, psilocybin? Sy it could be either. I know with pharmacy terms, or like drug drug names, they... English language is hard. All right, Hallucin hallucinogenic. As the infamous psilocybe argentypes. As of this writing, there are currently no laws regulating possession or cultivation of this fungus. However, considering the negative impact it would have on individuals, especially minors, official regulation and study are needed. Descriptions of a plant are written on it. This must be the missing page from the guide in the storage room. Scarlet, stripped shaped mushrooms. It should be, it should be, blah. it should be referring to these plants. Yep. So these red mushrooms are called Fox Lakata. According to the information, they seem to be mushrooms with a strong hallucinogenic effects. Please don't eat it. Please don't eat it. There's another piece of paper inside the pocket. Unlike the first, this one is written in rough, hurried penmanship. The author of this note... Oh, I'm so sorry. I have not been sleeping well. <clears throat> the author of this note was definitely pissed off. 
Fox Lakata and the murder at Lake S. The minor offender in the case seemed to have in ingested Fox Lakata, and the one who sold the mushroom to them was K. I've seen shifty looking youngsters roaming around the fox forest. Looks like they intend to harvest Fox Lakata to sell it as hallucinogens. Oh boy. There were also some students from our school, including Kay. I didn't disclose this information to the public out of fear that it would damage the school's reputation. That was a grave mistake. I take responsibility for everything. The murder of a mother and a child at Lake S, an incident I've never heard of before. That's all there is to inspect. Is Mr. Kokuri avenging his wife and, and kid, maybe? Find out anything useful, Yoshiki. Yeah, quite a bit. I describe the corpse's features and show Ma Mashita the items I found. I'm guessing that corpse is that brat, huh? huh. Maybe? Kakuda, maybe. Gotta be. He's a well-built school year, and that torn research paper in his pocket is a dead giveaway. If that's not Kakuda, who else would it be? Kakuda has been cursed by Kokuri. The curse didn't end just because he ran away. He probably lost his stamina here. Uh, we might have a better idea why he came here once we check out his belongings. Let's keep that stuff, Yoshiki. Agreed. So we got his cell phone. We got the document. I offer a silent prayer for his soul and leave the place. I realize something got our way back. Unlike the other victims, Kakuda's corpse didn't disappear. I wonder why. He became part of the forest, maybe? The only possible reason I came up with is that maybe when he passed, he wasn't human any longer. Kakuda has basically become mushrooms. Even his parents wouldn't recognize him in that state. I wonder what's a better death, not even leaving behind a corpse or being completely stripped of all your distinguishing human features. I don't know. I think I'd... Oh... What's that? Mm -hmm. Mushrooms are growing on a lump of moss. There's nothing particularly interesting here. Not even red mushrooms that resemble fox lakata. Yes. We checked the fence. Oh, no, wait. Beyond the, beyond the fence is cock. I, okay. I didn't check this one. On the ground, I see a mass with a rather odd shape. What is that? I better examine it. Inspect. An ominous mass surrounded by moss. It doesn't resemble a human. Is this perhaps a human who's body was turned into mushrooms i can't tell by looking i might be punished for this but i'll be able to confirm if i dig out some of the mushrooms all right let's do it i reach out to the mask poking it it's harder than i thought no <laughs> oh my there's no doing this with my hands i need something with a sharp edge maybe the shovel I take out the shovel and stick it into the mass. Blech, 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 blech. A part of the mass crumbles away. I carefully pick it up and look it over. I knew it. It's a mushroom. Its surface is as hard as its tree bark. I doubt this used to be a human. It just doesn't look like a human to me. There's no trace of clothing either. I could be wrong, of course, but I'm going with that. I don't want to think that I might have just mutilated and desecrated a corpse. There's something buried in the place I dug out. Yay! That means I can upgrade another thing. I pick it up. It's an eerie tooth. Let's go! We leveled up! Yashiki and the other spirits have been restored. Alright. Okay. I think we're good. We're good. Guess we're gonna go check this one out now. Over here. I'm gonna go on over here. I'm gonna go through the gate over here. Oh boy. All right. What's that? We find ourselves in an open space after passing the gate. This should be the grounds of the shrine. However, there are no remains of any buildings to be seen. Have they completely decayed? An old school lantern with mushrooms scattered here and there. Oh, and that, at that moment, I spot something glinting on top of the lantern. The tooth. I step closer and find a small object on it. Tooth. 
Oh, good catch. You, you'd make a good detective, Yoshiki. I pick it up. It's an eerie tooth. Hey. Right, let's see here. Yoshi. It's old lantern. The only trace left of the shrine. Oh, there. Thick bushes and shrubs crowd this area. Hey, Yoshiki. Do you see that red thing behind those bushes? Oh, no. I strain my eyes staring at the bushes, but it's too dark for me to see anything. You can't see it? You need new glasses. Come here. Majita walks toward the bushes as I follow him from behind. With my bright flashlight in hand, we cross the spacious open area. If Kokuri was actually in here, we'd be perfect targets. Just thinking about that sends chills down my spine. Don't, don't think about it then! Look, there it is. Oh! It's in the shape of a person! There's a red figure laying in the inner area. Hang on a second. Those are clumps of red plants that are in the shape of a human. Still, this doesn't explain anything about the shrine. We better take a closer look. The mushrooms growing here are thin, red filaments. They look similar to the red mushrooms inside the petri dish. This has got to be fox lakata. I don't get it. Why have they clustered in such a strange shape? Let's see. I take out the Flux Lakata document. I don't know how to use this though. Oh, uh, maybe we can shovel it? Maybe we can shovel it? I take out the small shovel from my bag. My gut's telling me something's buried here. That's enough motivation to start thrusting the shovel into the earth. It's a person, isn't it? It's a person. There's no way it's not, uh, unless they're tricking me. My shovel hits something hard. Uh-oh. Being careful not to break whatever it is, I try and excavate the dirt around it. Is it, is it bones? Are there bones? Before long, the object becomes visible. It's bones, it's skeleton. It's old human bones. The bones are clad with tattered clothes. The dirt has worked its way through the fiber now, but I believe this used to be white. Who the hell's this poor sod? I don't know, but the white clothes might make me think that it could be Mr. Kokuri from the rumors. Abe said Kokuri's the spirit of a priest, so this guy hears that priest? We may find out once we get a better look at the skeleton. I crouch next to the corpse and inspect it. From the bone structure, it appears these bones belong to a man. However, they don't really have any special identifying feature that could help us, like a missing finger or something. At this time of night, we'd be hard pressed to cross check his teeth before against dental records too. Making matters worse, other than the shreds of the formerly white clothing, there are no belongings to be found. Oops. The fact that his body is buried here might indicate that he was murdered. If so, then his belongings might have been stolen at that time. Who are you? Words full of anxiety and confusion tumble from my mouth. Uh. Are we getting a vision? Deep inside the old school, the dead fox god that looks alive inside the stomach. Ouch. What was that? A man's voice suddenly echoes through my mind as if he's trying to answer my question. But I believe these are murmurs of his deep resentment. If you listen too carefully, you may get overwhelmed by the regrets of the deceased. We can't stay here any longer. It's dangerous. Let's go, Marsta. I don't think we'll get any useful information here. Nothing really? Crap. Suddenly, the sound of a gunshot rings out and, and reverberates through the shrine grounds. Uh-oh. Oh, we gotta go. Th th that's... It's got something resembling a hunting rifle in its hands. Is that Mr. Kokuri? Mr. 
Mr. Kokuri disappeared? No, he's gonna reappear really close. Uh-oh. Another gunshot rings out and the bullet hits the ground near our feet, spraying us with dirt. This is bad. That thing re does real damage and he's trying to shoot us with it. Yeah, go. Hey, Yoshiki, don't go out there like that. You're wide open. After saying that, Maishita hides behind a nearby tree. I do the same and hunker down be behind a different tree. The bullet hits somewhere completely off target. Oh, d oh no. The bullet hits a spot near the lantern. <laughs> this guy's obviously an amateur. I think he's using a hunting rifle, but you can see the grouping of his shots is very loose. Either that gun's old and hasn't been cleaned, or he's just a poor marksman who keeps missing his target. I think as long as we keep a good distance from him, the bullets won't hit us. True, but we shouldn't be careless. He only needs one lucky shot to kill us. What should we do then? I can't see him anywhere. We can't just sit here and wait for him. We'll be dead meat once he gets close enough. Everything is certainly trending very badly for us. Even if we try to make a mad dash for it, the road ahead is straight and narrow. Even a bad shooter with a bad gun is going to be able to hit their target eventually in this kind of situation. What should we do then? Run is what we should do. We really can't make a move so long as we don't know where Kokuri is. Hold on, we can't see him right now. I feel like I remember something, but I'm not too sure. Keep calm and think. There must be clues somewhere. Eat some of the centipede, eat some of the mushroom. Ugh. Maybe the hallucinogen? No, but then I... We were able to see him without the hallucinogen. Inspect the body. We're gonna eat some mushrooms. Mashita, try eating this. I cut off a piece of the mushroom inside the dish and throw it at Mashita, who is hiding behind a tree. Man, if I were him, I'd be like, no. I don't wanna. Why don't you do it? Mashita catches it. You bastard, you really want me to eat this? Yeah, trust me. Frowning, Mashita pops the mushroom into his mouth and swallows it. <laughs> oh, no. Mashita looks at me with a strange expression afterward. What the hell was that for? Nothing's happening. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Maybe I should be the one eating it, not Mashita. Looks like this isn't the right choice. Great. So shoot us again. Or not. If we could just make him show himself. How do we do that? I bet. Yeah. Okay. So. Eat some of the mushrooms. Ugh, centipede. Yes. I opened the petri dish and decided to eat some of the mushrooms that grow on the centipede. I bite one of the mushrooms sticking out of the ins out of the insect's body and tear it out with force. Then, with steely determination, I swallow it down. I feel my body getting warm, like I just drank a mug of hot water. My heart is beating so fast, my vision starts to blur. This is probably the effect of Fox Nakata. Hey, you all right, Yoshiki? Yeah, I, I think so. There he is. Once my heartbeat returns to normal, I, I slowly stabilize. My vision stops going blurry and I'm no longer in a daze. Then a mysterious figure appears before my eyes. He's there, I can see Kokuri. Looks like this is the right choice. Kokuri hasn't moved an inch. Rest assured, he hasn't come any closer. Wait, what? You can see Kokuri? Yeah, thanks to the red demon. He crimson devil to see the invisible Kokuri. The female doll mentioned it before. <laughs> Calling us hooligans, Kokuri aims his gun in our direction. The bullet hits the tree we're hiding behind. His accuracy is improved. We're pinned down now. One thing's for certain, we can't escape right now. We need to find some way to fight back. I mean, I have a gun. Since Mashita can't see Kokuri, the only one who can find him is me. There's not much I can do to fight back, but I've got to give it my all. 
team up with Hidu. Aim and shoot Kokuri. He's a he's a ghost though. Yes. We'll try it, and then after that, we'll do the talismans. I open the suspicious paper bag and take out the gun inside. You already used that, Yoshiki. Remember, deep breaths, aim steady, take the shot. Sorry, but I have to leave it to you. I can't see the bastard. Uh, I'll give it a try. I've got no idea if this is going to work against Kokuri. Honestly, I'm just hoping my attack still will surprise him enough that he flees. Not expecting much, I poke my head out of cover and ready the gun. 60%, there's not going to fail it. I like surprises. Taking Amy and Kokuri, I pull the trigger immediately. Kokuri also shoots his gun at the same time his shot grazes my leg. Ooh. This is awful. My bullet doesn't hit Kokuri. I want to take my time and aim before firing my shot, but that'll only leave me defenseless for a long time. Is there a better way to do this? Uh oh. Since Masha can't see Kokuri, I'm, I'm the only one who can find him. There's not much I can do to fight back, but I've got to give it my all. Okay. Let's try that, I guess. I doubt it'll work, but I'll give it a shot. I come out of hiding and hold Abe's talisman out toward Kokuri. I need to recite a chant next. I'm going to have to redo this whole thing again. Watch. I'm not too sure about this one, but I guess I'll try Kujikiri, the Nine Cuts chant. Power, energy, harmony, healing, premonition, empathy. Oh. Power, energy, harmony, healing, premonition, empathy, dimension, creation, enlightenment. Oh. Ow. As I expected, this did not work. I'm attacked instead. Looks like this is the right choice. Maybe I can team up? <coughs> I'll team up with him. I open the suspicious paper bag and take out the gun inside. After all, I'm a complete novice. I don't have any confidence in my ability to shoot a gun. See, I didn't know I could team up with somebody while I'm shooting a gun because it's a one-person type of thing. Marshta, can you do something to distract Kokuri for a couple seconds? I figured you were going to ask something like that. I'll do something about it. Believing in Mashita's tactics, I poke my head out and ready my gun. And watch, I'm going to fail it this time. Maybe I just need to keep saying that so I can succeed. Mashita leaves his cover and shoots into the open space. Kokuri turns toward Mashita. Great job, Mashita. I take aim at Kokuri, who has now stopped moving, breathe deeply, and calmly pull the trigger. Kokuri lets out an eerie howl. Did you get him, Ma Yashiki? I think I hit him. Although, I guess it's more like a my bullet just passed through his body. Well, he is a spirit after all. If you could defeat them with guns, no one would call me to investigate. They just get the military. He seems mad, though. Uh-oh. Kokuri screams in anger and fires his gun. He then begins to approach us slowly. Crap, he's coming closer. So you, we just piss him off? I want to believe this is the right choice. Kokuri's breathing hard. He seems angry. The closer he gets to us, the more in danger we are. That also makes it easier to shoot him now. But will that really help us? Hey, what are you going to do? We're running out of time. I, I don't know about that. I know that already. If we knew how to deal with Kokuri's shots, we might be able to find an opening escape. Our bullets don't work against Kokuri, but we need to create an opening to survive. Oh, maybe the rifle's real? <laughs> Sorry, but you can't... But can you be a decoy once more, Mashita? Fine. 
Pressing in Mashita, I, I peek my head out of cover and ready my gun. Mashita does the same and fires that shot at the open space. Kokuri turns toward Mashita. Great job, Mashita. I take aim at Kokuri, who has now stopped moving, breathe deeply, and calmly pull the trigger. Kokuri lets out an eerie howl. Nice, that definitely hit. I saw it for a split second. Your shot hit his rifle. Kokuri sounds frustrated and angry. Something might have happened to his rifle. Did our attack jam his rifle? It's now or never. Kokuri can't shoot us. Let's go, Mashita. I know. No need to tell me. Once we reach a path, we beat feet and don't slow down. Looks like this is the right choice. Yeah, we did it. I thought I was going to have to start that all over again. Machida and I race out of there as fast as we can. We're running straight for the exit. There's no guarantee that Mr. Kokuri will let us go even if we escape the forest. Like slip mouth Kashima, he can probably follow us now that he set his sights on us. We'll have to be careful everywhere we're going forward. Even so, our only choice right now is to run for our lives even if hell is going to be hot on our heels whenever we go. Wherever we go. Uh, our only goal is survival. I'm sure that Mashita feels the same. It's the, ex <clears throat> it's the exit, Yoshiki. I is he still chasing us? We made it. He has not. Looks like we've survived the hunt for now. For crap's sake, we barely escaped that bastard. Crap sake. We better stay out of this goddamn forest for now unless you feel like being target practice. My shit looks exhausted and I'm sure I do as well. Let's take this opportunity to head to the infirmary and sort out everything we've just learned. Let's go! A sigh of relief escapes my lips the moment we step inside the infirmary. I'm lucky that I'm seeing these walls again, and that's not an exaggeration in the slightest. Time to tell Yasuoka and the others what happened in the forest. Yeah, let's talk to him. Welcome back. Glad to see you're both safe. Yasuoka and Hiru are the only people inside the infirmary. Where's Maruhashi? Uh-oh. Oh, she went to the restroom. A alone? She's aware of the dangers that Shrine possesses now, and she's not headed into the forest. She should be fine. Kokuri's not the, the only threat here, though. The Departed is roaming around the school as well. Although, the Departed only kills our target after issuing a notice, so Maruhashi should be fine. Good thing she's not here, then. I'll give you a quick summary of what happened before she returns. There are things I don't want her to hear. Like the bodies we found? I filled them in on what happened in the forest. I see. So Kakuda is... It's painful to know that a young life has been lost like that. But does that mean Kakuda was hooligan? More or less. Kakuda stole a document about Fox Lakata, so he must have known something about it. Though I find it hard to imagine that he was acting on his own. Fox Lakata is a strong hallucinogen, so it wouldn't surprise me if other people were doing something with it. A strong hallucinogen, eh? I'd like to study it at the Institute. It may be a good kind of alkaloid, very intriguing. Can you give me some of those Fox Lakata research once we wrap up this investigation? Err... Uh, cut the crap, Hiru. This thing needs to be in the hands of the government. I'm gonna submit this crap to my friend at the DEA. I'm not having it any other way, got it? Jeez, you're no fun. I'm back. Oh, you're here already. Hey, you better fill me in too. Don't leave me out of everything. F fine. So I have to tell her again? Or do I give her an edited version? Leaving out the bits about Kakuda's death. Okay. I tell her what happened in the forest. I concoct a story and say that I found the paper and the phone lying on the ground. <sighs> so Kakuda was in the forest. Why was he there though? Dunno, I think he got a call. Maybe his phone can tell us something. Unfortunately, it's broken. I've tried pressing the button, but... Let me take a look. Maruhashi uh, starts touching the phone screen like it's her own phone. It's not broken. The battery's just dead. 
Anyone with a phone could should have been able to realize this. Jeez, how bad with tech stuff are you, Grandpa? Ugh, sorry, you got me there. I have a charger that will work with this phone at home. Maybe we should try and charge it and then see if we can get something out of it. My home's not far from here. This phone's going to be pretty useless to us with a dead battery. Let's take her up on that offer. I lent Kakuda's phone to Maruhashi. All right, I'll be back. Maruhashi quickly exits the infirmary. What should we do now? Should we wait until that kid calls us? I object to that course of action. We should resume the investigation. It's for your sake as well, Yoshiki. Mm, what do you mean by that, Yasuoka? I can tell. You're being targeted by a spirit. Excuse me? Sooner or later, that spirit will find its way to you. If that happens while you're unprepared, you'll meet the same fate as Kakuda. No, for crap's sake, why is everything so... As a renowned fortune teller and spiritualist, Yasuoka's words carry a lot of weight. I thought maybe the clock had stopped with Kakuda's death and we'd have a little more time before there was another target. But it turns out that the clock is still ticking and it's counting down for me. But what should we do now? We still don't know who exactly Kokuri is, right? There's something we can research. I have an idea. Remember the case from Kakuda's document? Let's look into that murder of a mother and child at Lake Yes. There's That's been stuck in my head. How are we going to investigate that? Have Nakamatsu look it up on the internet for us. He should at least be able to pull up a general summary from somewhere. And by that, I mean you go call him up. Wait, why do I have to do it? You know how to use a phone. You just call him yourself. No, nah, I don't really like talking to him. We're not really on the same wavelength. Hey, <laughs> so that's your issue? I guess you can't expect a nice otaku and a hard-boiled ex-detective to get along. Looks like I'm gonna have to be the one to call Eita. All right. Ooh. Uh, trade for sacred objects. Let's do the 15%, I think. Oh. By 4%? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, let's do this one first. Okay. And then the next time we'll have to uh, upgrade another, like maybe the second item and then we'll do the pack. Alright. All right, friends, and that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed, please hit that like and subscribe. Check out our memberships for some cool stuff. And if you like live gaming content, check out my Twitch linked below in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!